The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, the worship of Jesus by the wise men. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28, where Mark was inspired to write. They, Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this, a new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. My dear friends in Christ, Prior to our reading, Mark records for us the accounts of Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist and then how he was led, how Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by, by Satan for 40 days. And now after that, well, Jesus was in Capernaum where he would set up his headquarters for his Galilean ministry up in the northern portion of Palestine. When the Sabbath day came, on, and he's in Capernaum like this, when the Sabbath day came, it says, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue, and on this particular Sabbath, he began to teach the people. Normally, it would have been a scribe or a, a, a rabbi who would have been doing the teaching there in the synagogue. They taught the Old Testament laws and the traditions of the Jewish religious leaders that they had concocted, that they had added to God's law, to Moses' law. And I had to believe, I have to imagine that there were rabbis who did teach about the promises of God because the promise of God are in the Old Testament. But for the most part, what the rabbis did is they focused on those laws and those traditions and they kept on telling the people that they needed to follow those laws completely or at least do the best job that they could if they were to hope for salvation. Mark does give us the impression that when people went to hear the rabbis talk that they almost put the people to sleep and that's because they weren't giving the people what they really needed to hear in, in general. And now this is a generality, of course. In general, a rabbi's teaching lacked the real gospel preaching. The gospel, as I said, it was in the Old Testament. It talked about the promises of God, the promise of the Savior, and the Savior who would save us from our sins. But they seem to focus not on the gospel, but on the law and the following of those laws and the traditions of the elders, what a person needed to do to save himself, which is an impossibility. But on this Sabbath, Jesus taught. The people had a real treat in store for them, and that's because, well, Jesus would have preached the law to them. He would have shown them their sins and told them what they deserved because of their sins, that they would deserve eternal separation from God, eternal punishment. But then he also preached to them the gospel to show them the way to heaven, the gospel about the promises of God, the promise of the Savior who would pay for sins and win heaven. He of course, did tell them that they were sinners and that they needed help. But then he also told them about God's grace and God's love. He told them about the forgiveness of sins that is 
freely offered to them and to us and how forgiveness, how it instills in us a new life, a life that wants to live for God, that wants to keep the laws of God, that wants to live according to God's plan for us. But he could talk about that and then talk about the joys of heaven which are through the promises of God. And now what a message he had for them and for us. It had a promise that the thou shalts and the thou shalt nots of the rabbis lacked. This message really did catch the people off guard that day. Mark says the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. The people were amazed at his teaching and the authority with which he was teaching and Jesus preached forgiveness that he himself would win for all. He's the source of that forgiveness, the only source of salvation. He's the one who, well, we know, suffered and died to pay for our sins. Surely you can't picture a single Jew falling asleep or dozing off while Jesus was teaching. Most likely what was happening is that their ears were all standing at attention, just waiting for more words to come from Jesus' lips. And now that's not to say that Jesus had to be the most dramatic preacher in the world. I can't picture him looking like a flamboyant TV preacher who would be out to entertain. But Jesus' message is what got the people's attention. He told them, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The Holy One of God amazes with his message. And what a wonderful and amazing message he proclaims. Sin and grace, law and gospel, Sin, yeah, but knowing that we have a Savior and the promise of heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son with his amazing message, which not only shows us our sin and what we deserve because of our sin, but also shows us your love and forgiveness and your desire to have us live forever with you in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always, amen.